Okay, so today I'm going to play through the adventure number five of the Castle Ravenloft board game. And the general overview for this adventure is that we have to uh, navigate this uh, creature or this person called Cavan through the dungeon uh, so that he can we can locate a certain tile called the Dark Tile, or the Dark Fountain rather. And when we locate the Dark Fountain then some other things happen. We'll worry about what happens when we get to it. And uh, this is called the Final Transformation. And I've already gone through the adventure setup. I've already shuffled everything and you know placed the tile uh, as you know as your indicate as it says to do. And as far as what happens with Cabin, we'll worry about that. Um, you know while we're playing the game, we'll, we'll describe what's going on there. This is only the second time I have ever played this adventure. The first time was a failure. Uh, which I would have posted on my YouTube channel, but I made some mistakes. I made a, a mistake in the rules, and I don't like to uh, post videos if I notice a mistake I made. So uh, let's go ahead and get on with the adventure. Well, I guess before we read the flavor text, we'll go ahead and draw our treasure card for each of our heroes. Uh, we'll draw for Arjun first, then we can give the item to either player. And right away we got an item. We got the scroll of teleportation, and basically you can teleport your heroes anywhere you want. We'll go ahead and give that to Arjun. And now we'll draw for Alyssa. And we got an item. We got the Glyph of Warding. So I'll go ahead and put that down with Alyssa. And we'll take our treasure cards and we'll put them over here. And if she ever plays the Glyph of Warding, we'll, uh, we'll keep that over here by her card as well. And we'll discuss what that does when the time comes. Alright, so flavor text. The cleric of Barovia has entrusted you with Kevin, a young villager who has been bitten by the vampire lord, Count Strahd. To save this young man, the cleric explains, you must enter the castle and find the dark fountain. The water in that fountain can reverse the vampiric curse flowing through Kevin's veins, but make sure that you but make sure that one of you always stays with Kevin and be careful not to let any of Strahd's monsters get close to Kevin. He is close to succumbing to the vampiric curse, and the evil of the castle could cause him to lose himself. Be careful. Alright, turn number one. Uh, we'll start with Arjun, and we're just going to go ahead and explore because there's really nothing else we can do. So we'll have Arjun go ahead and use his movement to move up to this corner. He has a movement of five, so that's no trouble. Now, quickly, um, since Cavan was adjacent to... Arjun, at the beginning of Arjun's turn, uh, now that I am done with the hero phase, I am allowed to bring Cavan up next to Arjun. That's uh, one of the special adventure rules that we have. Uh, when a hero is adjacent to the Cavan token at the start of his or her hero phase, he or she can lead Cavan through the dungeon. At the end of that hero phase, place the Cavan token on a square adjacent to him. However, I'm going to choose not to do that. I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, cavern down by Alyssa. So that actually makes me uh, think of another rule, but actually we'll talk about it when we get into uh, Arjun's villain phase. So I'll go ahead and update for Arjun. So never a, ceiling, a healing surge on turn one for the first player, uh, never a treasure card for turn one on the first player, and there's never an attack for turn one on the first player. But we did move. We are exploring, so we'll go ahead and draw a, a tile now. And we're going to just explore this way, north. So we draw a tile. We notice it has a black triangle, so we'll have an encounter. But first, we draw a monster card for Arjun. And we got a Wraith, which is the worst monster in this game. So we're going to place a Wraith on the bone pile of the newly drawn tile. And then we're going we're gonna to go ahead and have that encounter. There's nothing we can do to cancel this encounter. And it's a dart trap. We are starting off not good. Uh, so let's uh, get the dark trap. This is probably like the worst thing that could happen to start out a game. Get a wraith and a trap. So we place the uh, trap on Arjun's tile. So place the dark trap marker on the active hero's tile. If that tile already has a marker, discard and draw a new one. Okay, so traps, they work just like monsters. So we keep the card, we put it right next to the Wraith because the Wraith came out first. So we activate the Wraith, then we activate the Dart Trap. But let's update our turn tracker here. So we got a black tile, we drew a Wraith. Uh, there's no blessings or conditions. We have an encounter. 
Uh, we'll talk about the villain here in a second. Uh, again, we got the Wraith, so that will be first. And then we got the Dart Trap. I'll just put DT. Okay, so uh, we're done with the exploration phase. Now we, I mean, technically we've already started the villain phase because we already handled the encounter. But at the beginning of the villain phase, um, if uh, at the start of any villain phase, if there is a monster on Cabin's Tile or if there is no hero on Cabin's Tile, Cabin temporarily transforms into a vampire. So that's not the case right now, so we don't have to worry about it. And we want to keep this condition as much as we can. So we want to make sure that Cabin is always on a tile with a hero and always on a tile with a hero with no monsters on that tile at the beginning of a villain phase. Now, you'll inevitably end up with monsters on the tile with Cabin, but if you can take care of them before the villain phase starts, then, um, then, then it's no trouble. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and activate the Wraith. So if the race is, Wraith is within one tile, it is, it's going to move adjacent to the closest hero and attack that hero with life draining claws. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. The Wraith is going to move uh, bone pile to bone pile and attack Arjun with life draining claws. And it's going to get a plus six on that attack. And it rolled a five, so six and five is 11. That's going to be a miss, but the Wraith deals damage <clears throat> even if it misses. So Arjun's going to take one damage from the Wraith, bringing him down to nine. And now the Dart Trap will activate. So we pretty much know everything we need to know just from here, but we'll go ahead and look at the card. Uh, so you attack each hero on the tile, and hit or miss it does damage, and it attacks with a plus eight. So now we're going to attack Arjun again with the Dart Trap. And that's a 19, so that's going to hit for two more damage. So we're going to take Arjun down to seven. <clears throat> and because I often forget that Arjun has this, I'm going to put it up next to Arjun so that uh, at the beginning of his next hero phase, which is when you have to play this card, I can use it to regain two of those hit points. All right, so that is the end of Arjun's turn. And now Alyssa's going to have a go, and I'm thinking... I'm thinking uh, we probably just want to try to get away from this dart trap. Let me see here. Because it only attacks on that tile. Some of these traps attack on the tile and on one tile around, so it's hard to get away from them. But this one we can maybe just avoid. So I'm thinking maybe we'll have Alyssa go this way. And we can kind of plan on just ignoring the dart trap. I don't know if that's a good strategy or not, but I think that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so, let's think about this for a second. We definitely don't want that Wraith around. Um, maybe we can place the, the first monster that moves. So, you do this instead of attacking. So, place the Glyph Ward marker on your tile. The first monster that moves to that tile takes one damage. I think maybe we'll do that. So we're going to place the Glyph of Ward hmm, here. I'm wondering if I want to do that. Because I'm thinking the Wraith will come down. But on the other hand, if, when we explore over here, we're going to get a new tile, a new monster. And most likely, whatever monster is drawn is just going to come over here and get hit for one. Um, We're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so... So for Lissa, uh, she did not use a Surge. Let's slide this down a little bit. She did not use a Surge. Uh, she's not going to have to move, so there's no movement. Um, and instead of attacking... Uh, where's it at? So use this item instead of attacking. So technically, we didn't attack, but I'll put... Um, we, we did use our attack action attack. And I'll just put GW just to remind myself that we use the Glyph of Warding. So she doesn't get a treasure card. Using her scout, she will explore. Okay, so she's gonna scout over here. And we got a black tile, so there's gonna be an encounter. And we're gonna draw a monster, see what she gets. And a ghoul. 
So I think this ghoul is just going to auto-die. But I've never actually played out the Glyph of Warding. Every time I've drawn it, I forget I have it, and I never place the thing down. So, so that's the ghoul, and she will have an encounter. So let's see what kind of encounter we get. Neglected Passage. Uh, if you don't have a start, that doesn't matter. So draw a tile from the bottom of the dungeon. Tile stack and place it adjacent to the unexplored edge that is closest to the start tile. So that's going to be there. Place a new monster, but do not draw an encounter card. All right. So we'll discard that. So we go to the bottom of the stack. Pull out a tile from the bottom of the stack. And we're going to place it. And of course it's a white tile. I hate when that happens because it feels like a waste of a white tile. So we put that down. We do draw a new monster. Please don't be a wraith. Cobalt Skirmisher. Place the Cobalt Skirmisher on the bone pile of the newly drawn tile. Okay, let's update for Alyssa because we've had a lot going on there. All right, so black tile, um, and the monster she drew was a ghoul. No blessings or conditions. We did have an encounter. Um, we got the ghoul, and we also got a cobalt skirmisher. So, again, technically at the beginning of our villain phase, we have to check... Uh, the, the deal with Cavan right now he's fine he's on a monster he's on a tile with a hero and there are no monsters on that tile so now we go into the monster activation the ghoul's going to go first if the ghoul is adjacent it's not if the ghoul is within one tile it is it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with paralyzing claws now I think the first monster that moves to or is placed on this tile takes one damage and then remove this marker so again, I've never actually played with Glyph of Warding. Every time I draw that treasure card, I forget I have it. So the way I interpret this would be that this ghoul is going to try to move to our... Uh, is going to try to move adjacent to Alyssa. But essentially, the second it touches this tile, it takes one damage, which is enough to kill it. So it dies before it gets a chance to attack. That's how I interpret that. And then the... Uh, and then this is removed. So we're going to remove the Glyph of Warding. We're going to discard the Glyph of Warding. So the Ghoul becomes experience. So we'll turn that sideways. Take the Ghoul off the table. And now... Uh, so that wouldn't count, I don't think, as a kill. robot vacuum. I forgot that it was time for that to kick in, so I had to shut it off. Uh, getting back, so I don't think that would count as a kill because the Glyph of Warding did it. I don't know how to interpret the rules on that, but I'm going to say it doesn't count as a kill so she doesn't get a treasure. Usually that only happens during the hero phase. So now the Cobalt Skirmisher is going to get a chance to attack, and if the Cobalt is within one tile of a hero, it attacks the closest hero with the javelin. Now, Cavan does not count as a hero. Uh, the way, let's find that bit here. Because Castle Ravenloft and its denizens recognize Cavan as one of their own due to his impending transformation into a vampire, monsters don't attack him and he's not affected by encounter cards and so on. So, even though Cavan's technically closer, he doesn't count. So, the Cobalt Skirmisher is going to attack Alyssa with a plus nine. So, plus 9. And it's a 9. So, 9 and 9 is 18. That's definitely going to hit. Alyssa's armor class is currently 15. With Arjun's defender, if he's on the same tile as her, it'll be 16. But right now, he's not on the same tile. So, Alyssa takes 1 damage, knocking her down to 7. And everybody's had a chance to go. So, that is going to be the end of turn number 1.